Hello everyone. Now I am shifting to the ne next topic that is adenomyosis. We are discussing the series of abnormal uterine bleeding and now we have come to adenomyosis. What is the meaning of adenomyosis? Before I discuss, I just want to take a minute about endometriosis. What is endometriosis? In the uterus, there is this endometrial lining which we have discussed quite in detail in our menstrual cycle lecture. There is a basal zone, there is a functional zone. Functional means the zone which is under the effect of the hormones and which has got the maximum receptors for estrogen and progesterone, right? And the basal zone responds less to the hormone but it is necessary for the regrowth of the endometrium for the next menstrual cycle. This was just a recap to tell you what is the functional thing and what is the basal thing. So, in some pathologies like endometriosis, what we mean, endometriosis means these active endometrial cells are present elsewhere inside the body. It could be on the ovary, it could be on the peritoneum or anywhere. So, that is endometriosis and we will be discussing it in detail in the coming classes. Today, adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is a condition where there is ingrowth. Ingrowth means this functional and basal layer, it grows inside both the glandular and the stromal components, they directly go inside the myometrium and get embedded over there more than 2.5 mm deep inside the myometrium. Once again, see this is the uterus, this is the endometrium. As I am telling that there are two zones in the endometrium, similarly the myometrium is also divided into zones. So, the zone which is here, this endometrio-myometrial interface, the zone which is connecting the myometrium and the endometrium, if there is some problem with that zone, the endometrium will go inside and gets buried embedded inside the myometrium. If these deposits go more than 2.5 mm inside the myometrium, they sit there and they respond to the hormones and then there is a problem, the condition becomes adenomyosis. I hope I am making myself clear that adenomyosis is just like endometriosis but here the implants are inside the myometrium itself. So it may be diffuse or focal, what does that mean? Either it could be diffuse, there are multiple, multiple deposits, it is going inside and getting deposited or focal, there is a small round structure which is formed inside and we call it as adenomyoma. It is also called as endometriosis interna, that is why I was talking about endometriosis because if the endometriotic spots we find in pelvis at other places we call it as endometriosis but if it is going inside the uterus itself it becomes endometriosis interna. So, once again we come back to the definition it is a condition where there is ingrowth of the endometrium containing both glandular and stromal components directly into the myometrium and more than 2.5 mm depth inside the myometrium. So, once we know what is adenomyosis, we can understand the features more easily, comfortably and recall it better. What is the cause of such ingrowth? Why it happens in some patients and does not happen in some patients? The answer is same as that of endometriosis, it is not known. We do not know why it would happen, but what are the risk factors at which age group we will find it? It is commonly seen in elderly women with increased parity. On contrary to endometriosis, I would like to say contrary to endometriosis. What is endometriosis? It is a disease of the young. Those who have not become pregnant till date and are menstruating every cycle. So, in those cases endometriosis is more common. But adenomyosis is more common in 40s where the woman has given birth to multiple children or there was multiple times dilatation and curettage. In short, there was some problem with the endometrio-myometrial interface and in that cases, there are more chances that the endometrium gets embedded inside the myometrium. 
and that is the reason why the posterior wall of the uterus is more commonly involved in adenomyosis because if the woman is lying down the deposits will go backward posteriorly because of the gravity it will not come anteriorly so it may be related to repeated childbirths see repeated childbirths vigorous curettage or excess of estrogen effect so this is important this is very very important that it comes in elderly women in 40s with increased parity contrary to endometriosis pelvic endometriosis coexists in about 40% of the cases now pathogenesis how it happens i always teach this mostly you will not be asked it in your exam but if you understand this then you will be able to learn the clinical features and management more more easily and your recall power increases it is characterized by the extension of the endometrial glands and stroma beyond the emi that is the endometrial myometrial surface what i was talking this surface so the endometrium goes inside as the submucosa is absent endometrial glands lie in direct contact with the underlying myometrium the myometrium these basal cells they are directly over the myometrium so if any breach occurs over here it can easily get inside and get embedded it forms nests deep within the myometrium it goes inside and then forms nest over there a junctional zone what is a junctional zone i will be discussing more detail in cases of investigations because these are sonographic findings these are mri findings so a t2 weighted image t2 weighted image is found in mris where there is a junctional zone which i was talking about emi so the myometrium all the layers of the myometrium the one which is very near to the endometrium is the junctional zone and there is some defect with this junctional zone which is quite evident in mri films it is thought that the disturbance of this normal junctional zone predisposes to secondary infiltration of endometrial glands and stroma to the inner myometrial zone every word carries importance inner myometrial zone this is the uterus now i am focusing on the myometrium so there is a thin junctional zone which is connecting endometrium to the inner myometrium so the glands will migrate from here the stroma and gland will migrate from here get embedded into the internal inner layers of the myometrium the disturbance of the junctional zone may be due to the endometrial factors probably multiple child births there was some problem with the endometrium genetic predisposition also works an altered immune response we actually don't know what happens but it happens something happens with the junctional zone and the endometrium moves inside trauma to the deeper endometrium mostly in cases of repeated curettage causing the breakdown of the interface is also thought of as an etiological factor anyhow what we need to remember is elderly women with increased parity this is what i was talking about see at this diagram this is your urinary bladder blue color right this is the rectum vagina cervix and this is the whole uterus and as i was emphasizing generally the posterior wall is involved yes there are some deposits in the anterior wall also but mostly because of gravity or whatever it is going inside the posterior wall of the myometrium and it is called as posterior enhancement and if you will measure the thickness of the posterior myometrial wall is much much more as compared to the anterior wall this is a histological thing a section where this all small small thing these are all myocytes these are myometrium but there are glands and stroma inside the myometrium which confirms the diagnosis of an adenomyosis it may affect both the anterior and posterior wall but posterior wall is most commonly affected which i was emphasizing in your sonography transvaginal sonographies you will always find this posterior wall enhancement the growth and tissue reaction in the endometrium depends on the 
response of the ectopic endometrial tissue to ovarian steroids this is very important which part of the endometrium has got embedded and how much after embedding it is responding to the ovarian steroid that means estrogen and progesterone these all diseases may it be fibroid endometriosis adenomyosis these are all hormonal dependent things they increase with increased hormones so just think about it if a functional endometrium is present inside the myometrium with each menstrual cycle it will keep on bleeding it will keep on creating problems if the basal layer of the endometrium is only there then the tissue reaction is much less because basal layer is not so much responsive to the hormones so it is all about the luck of the patient that if only the basal layer is embedded then it is okay but if there is functional layer also which is highly responsive to the hormones then the tissue reaction is marked why tissue reaction because it will bleed with every cycle and the endometrium cre creates problem and the myometrium gets thicker and thicker and thicker there is hyperplasia hyperplasia means increased cell volume as well as cell number of the myometrium producing diffuse enlargement of the uterus sometimes symmetrically but at times most of the posterior wall right the number of myometrial cells do increase they start increasing as a reaction to the presence of blood inside the myometrium and the wall becomes very very thick the growth may be localized what i was talking sometimes it goes to one place only and the reaction is here 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 and then something which is resembling to a fibroid develops but it is not a fibroid it is adenomyoma how do we differentiate that it has no pseudo capsule no capsule because what it is it is the hyperplasia of the myometrium in response to the endometrium so it is a thick appearance structure which looks like a fibroid but it has no boundaries because it is just myometrium now in about 50% of the cases it remains asymptomatic like if it is a small deposit if it is only the basal thing most of the fe uh, females they don't show any symptom but if the functional layer was present and there are huge deposits then adenomyosis is a problematic thing so as per our clinical features history eliciting first of all parity and age we ask the age of the patient in our personal history so patient is generally in 40s and in obstetric history you will find that she has have uh, given birth to multiple child or there were multiple dncs now symptom symptoms menorrhagia is very very classy 70% of the patients will present with menorrhagia heavy bleeding because now the surface of the uterus has increased the excessive bleeding is due to increased uterine cavity associated with endometrial hyperplasia and inadequate contractions because the initial thing was high estrogen thing also right so increased cavity increased bleeding high hormones hyperplasia increased bleeding and because now the uterus is a thick structure is a big structure it will try to expel the clots out it will try to expel the things out and there is heavy pain dysmenorrhea during the periods so if we talk about the clinical features menorrhagia is very very conspicuous then comes dysmenorrhea as we will study later on but still i will tell you that d d i ddi is the classical triad of endometriosis dysmenorrhea dysperunia infertility but in cases of endometriosis menorrhagia the sorry adenomyosis menorrhagia is the main symptom it will also have dysmenorrhea dysperunia and infertility progressively increased colicky pain during the periods due to the retrograde pattern of uterine contractions in the this all etiologic theories what we come, what we come across for endometriosis or adenomyosis they say irregular uterine contraction some of it which expels the blood inside the uterine cavity from the peritoneal cavity also so after menorrhagia dysmenorrhea because of the irregular uterine contraction dysperunia and frequency of micturition 
Sometimes the adenomyosis becomes so huge that the uterus is so hard and so big, it becomes at least 12 to 14 weeks pregnant size uterus, right? So the whole pelvis, in whole pelvis there is a big uterus. So the patient is having problem in urinating as well as is having painful sexual intercourse. Infertility. Women with adenomyosis have a higher incidence of infertility and miscarriage because of obvious reasons, because of irregular uterine contractions and probably the thickened myometrium that the patient may present initially with infertility or miscarriages. Abnormal function of the subendometrial myometrium, what I was talking about, the thing which is just beneath the endometrium, the myometrium is having abnormal contractions, abnormal functions. It may lead to infertility, it may lead to miscarriages, retrograde myometrial contraction, interference in sperm transport and implantation because everything is problematic, everywhere there are contractions, the uterus is trying to expel the things out. Abnormal endometrial immune response. In the etiology also we, will be ta we were talking that the junctional zone is disturbed probably due to some genetic predisposition or because of some immune response. So with that persistent immune response there are chances of subfertility and if there is implantation it may lead to, it may end up in miscarriage also. Now, what will we see? This, these were all complaints. The patient will come, we will see the age, we will see the parity, then menorrhagia, dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, infertility, recurrent miscarriages, classical symptoms of adenomyosis. Then abdominal examination. Once you are examining the patient, the patient may be pale also in general examination because she is having heavy bleeding per vaginum. And the abdominal examination, you are putting a hand over the abdomen of the patient and there is a hypogastric mass arising of the pelvis and the midline. Midline is important because the uterus increases in size in a globular way. It is not a fibroid which is irregular. So this is your symphysis pubis, this is your umbilicus. In the hypogastric area, you can see there is some globular mass which is globular. The lower margin is not reached because it is coming from the pelvis and it is smooth in contour. It is not irregular as in cases of fibroid uterus. The size usually does not exceed 14 weeks pregnant uterus size. This is what I was talking. Even in cases of excessive adenomyosis, extensive disease, 12 to 14 weeks size is the maximum size generally what a uterus attains. What happens in a pelvic examination? Similarly, you are doing a biomanual examination, one hand inside the vagina and one over the abdomen. So, you will find a globular, thick walled, big uterus around 12 to 14 weeks in size. So, with this, I finish off with the part 1 of the adenomyosis and covering the pathology, pathogenesis, your signs and symptoms. In part 2, we will be discussing the further management. Thank you.